So I love transformation. I love helping companies transform. In fact, as Saul said, I've helped build and now lead a company called SY Partners who does just that. We work with CEOs and teams and companies who are going through some form of transformation. And over the past 20 years, we've had the privilege of working with many great leaders and many great companies. Howard Schultz and his leadership team at Starbucks through their last transformation and a return to greatness. Mark Zuckerberg and his leadership team early on in Facebook in how to become a great company, how to build a culture of sustainability, right? how to become great. And at IBM, with John Iwata, first with Lou Gerstner, then with Sam Pomizano, now with Ginny Remitti, how to continue to be great and do great things in the world. And through all that work and everything we've learned, while I love transformation, I'm absolutely obsessed with scale. To transform those companies, we actually have to figure out how do you drive transformation at scale. Right? Well, it's actually really simple, right? It's about greatness. It's about greatness at every level within a company. See, if you want to be great on the outside, you have to work hard and fight for greatness on the inside. Great companies who are doing great things are made up of great leaders, which are made up of great teams, which are made up of great individuals. The definition for us of greatness is the act of being courageous enough to bring your best self to work every day, and then aligning with a team of people that you trust to go change the world. Well, interestingly enough, I think that we're all really good at the top. We're all working with leaders and leadership teams, we pay a lot of attention there. And because we're working with leadership teams, it means we're focusing on the individual. We're really good at the first half of that equation, helping individuals bring their best selves to work every day to transform. In fact, we do it. Many companies do it. We've even created an application to help individuals so that we can scale that, right? It's called Unstuck, because we believe Great people every day get stuck. It's what you do to get unstuck that's the most important thing. And so we focus a lot on that. And in all the work we started to do, we started to realize, well, why aren't these transformations sticking? Why is it not happening? Because if it doesn't stick, you can't do great things. And it's, we started to realize that there is a whole missing piece. We're missing the core. We're not paying attention to the core, what I so fondly and lovingly call the forgotten middle, right? These are the people who work inside your companies, right? These are the people in the middle. These are the people who come to work every day. These are the people who do the work day in and day out, right? They're just below the leadership level, and they come in and they do the work. It doesn't matter if you're a large organization or a small organization, a startup, a nonprofit, an institution, an organization. All of you, all of us, have that core. And we've completely forgotten about the core. This is my story. So remember your first time. Not that first time. Right, come back. Remember your first time as a manager. OK, go there. How many of you are cringing right at this moment? Right, thinking about what you did, how you did it. You did it. Well, my first time was over 20 years ago. I worked at Apple. I went to Apple in 1985, and I joined a small group called the Newton Group in 1987. And if those of you are young enough, most of you are young enough not to remember the Newton, it was the next big thing for Apple. It was supposed to be the next big thing after Steve left the first time. We thought we were going to change the world, right? It was a device, and we were going, it was a personal digital system. We were going to change the world. Well, here I was, all of 28 years old, not very gray, but starting to go gray. 
And interestingly enough, I was actually one of the oldest people, right? At 28 years old, right? And I thought I knew everything, right? This was the first time I became a manager. I was given a group of five people, and I was leading other engineering teams. I thought I was great. And I really believed I was a great manager, right? Why not, right? My teams, they were working 24-7, 365 days a week, nights, weekends, right? We were doing something great. We had to be great. Well, guess what? The reality is, I was young and experienced, I was naive. My team was really dysfunctional. We were exhausted, <laughs> right? Exhausted. We were constantly spinning, meeting after meeting after meeting. I mean, look how young we were, right? We were really frustrated. We had, we had very broken relationships. And yes, there were some good times, but more often than not, it was painful. It was hard. It was absolutely an utter and complete failure, right? The Newton failed, the team failed, I failed. But more importantly, I've now come to realize I was failed. No manager, no leader, no one was paying attention. No one was teaching me, no one was helping me understand how to be better at what I do. It was a completely humbling experience, right? And I took that experience and it laid the foundation for the company we've created, and it's everything working with leaders, great leaders and companies, and hundreds upon hundreds of teams at the core, at the middle, that we've learned two truths. The first thing is, is I think we all grew up believing that business is only rational, right? It's all about productivity, it's all about efficiency. You go, you come to work, you do your work, you leave, you go home. Personal is personal, work is work, business is business. Well, guess what? It's not only rational, right? Business is actually human, right? It's human, it, it, it's living, it's breathing. It's made up of people, therefore, it is personal, right? Companies are made up of people, and when people come, they bring everything with it. You bring your beauties, you bring your flaws, you bring your hopes, you bring your desires. You come to work, and if you're angry, you come to work, if you're sick, you come to work because you want to, because you don't want to, except no matter what it is, when you come, you bring it with you. If you think your people are not bringing all of that stuff with them every day, think again. I know when I come to work and I'm cranky or I'm tired, you don't think my team doesn't tiptoe around me? They absolutely tiptoe around me. They want to get out of my way, right? Because teams because companies are made up of people, it's really personal, it's rational, but yes, it is personal. And we have to think about the personal. We have to bring the human element into what we do, into how we lead, into how we teach, into how we mentor, uh, into, how we, into how we coach. I always say, people don't come to work for just a paycheck. They come because they actually believe in the purpose of what the company's trying to do, but they stay or they don't stay because of the people. If they have a great manager and they have a great team, nine chances they will stay, they will be happy, they will thrive, they will help you transform. If they're not happy, imagine what it's like every day to wake up every day and not be happy and have to go to work. You don't think you don't, they don't bring that with them every day. It's imperative that we really begin to understand that business isn't only rational, it's also personal. And that we have to bring those two things together. The second truth we've learned is that great teams don't come about by chance. We wish they did, right? I went to Apple, I thought we did. We all come together magically, we're a great team. Well, the reality of it is we're not, right? Great teams come about because it's hard work. They work hard at it. In all the years, the 20 years that we've been doing this, we've watched a lot of teams. Those teams that are great work on a set of positive habits every day. And guess what? Those habits are a blend 
of some of the rational, but also of the personal. They bring the human element into it, right? And we've seen this pattern, and there are nine habits we've begun to see that really help teams become great teams they work on. One is superpowers, really understanding yourself. What do you do better than anyone else? What does each one of your teammates do better than anyone else? Great teams build great purpose. They understand their purpose, right? And if they understand their purpose, they can see the forces that are for them, and they understand the forces that are against them. And if they can see those, then they understand the bold moves that they need to make. And they stay focused on those bold moves because they understand the outcomes they are trying to achieve. Great teams become very resilient. They learn the capability to reframe, right? All the obstacles that come in your way, how do you reframe them for the positive? And it's all built on a level of trust, right? We call it duos, right? Working on the one-to-one -one relationships because it is the smallest atomic unit of trust in a team. They have belief, and they build belief in other people. And at the end of the day, they tuck it all together with decision making, right? If you do all this, then great teams understand the decisions they need to make, who needs to make them, how to make them, when to make them, how to stick to them, and to move forward. So I'm really out of time, but I'm going to take the time. I'm going to go through three of these, because um, I think it's important. The first one is superpowers, right? So superpowers is great teams know their strengths, and they play to them. Okay, so what is it, and why is this so important? Well, because when you know what you do better than anyone else, and if you can stay in that zone, and all of your team members can stay in it, it's happiness, right? Because we're all adding value. We're all doing the things that we love, right? Superpowers is extremely, understanding superpowers. It's so important that I want to put it in context for you. So earlier I said we created an application called Unstuck that helps individuals get unstuck. Well, we are creating a set of collaborative tools for teams to help teams for that middle, for the core, help teams work better together, and it's helping them teach those nine habits that we work, right? So we built a tool, but what I decided to do was take that tool and do an analog version. And when you leave here today, you will all get a little deck, an analog version, a prototype of this tool, and I would encourage you to take it home and work on it, take a look at it, play it, understand your superpowers, understand your team's superpowers, we love to give things away. We love to give it to people that they can actually go do something with. Let me just tell you quickly how to use it. You will get this deck. Take the deck, turn the first two cards over, read the whites, look at the situation on the right, look at the situation on the left. Right? The one that situation that is more you, that is uniquely you, that is better than what anybody else does seem, hold on to that, discard the other one. Keep going through the deck, keep reading them, keep discarding the one that's not you, keep the one that is you. At the end, You'll have one card left, turn it over, that's your superpower. That's the thing you do uniquely better than anyone else. And then it is your job to stay in that zone as much as possible. And it's your job to understand your team's superpowers and get them to stay in that zone. Some of you might find, because we always do, that there's a couple of others that really feel true to who you are. Pull those out, turn those over, those are your secondary superpowers. So here's how it works in real life. This is my, one of my teams at, at SY Partners, right? So we are a collection of teams, right? We're a collection of individuals who are really smart with really diverse backgrounds. They have to come together quickly, and they have to be great right away. They have to work high-performing right away because they're working on some of the biggest problems that companies face today. So we do superpowers all the time for our teams, right? So here's this team. Here's James. James's superpower is system thinking. For us, system thinking is so critical if you're going to lead one of our teams, because you have to see the whole. CEO see the whole, executive see the whole, you have to see the whole. Katie's superpower is invention. Now, the one great thing about systems thinking is you get to see the whole, but you're not actually that generative. So having someone on the team that's generative is extremely important, especially for us, because you can see the whole system, but we have to generate the original thinking that helps solve the problem. Chris's superpower is pattern matching. You can see the patterns. He can say, oh, we've seen this before. That's also extremely important for us, because if we don't, our teams will spin, right? Federico's superpower is creative thinking, right? All teams get stuck. Having someone who has creative thinking and that can look at it from a different lens and bring it is extremely important to us. 
It's also extremely important for our client and our client work because we have to help clients see and believe new things, and they can bring those to life. And last but not least, Mark's superpower is energy, right? Every single one of you needs one of these on your team, right? Energy. When he comes into the, to the room, he comes into the team, he lights that up, right? You need that. We know that great teams are teams that have a lot of energy, right? That are focused energy, that they know what they're doing. Go get yourself one of these on your team and make sure you have it. It also builds great trust, which leads me to the second thing, which is duos. Great teams have strong duos, creating high trust. And we call it duos, and we look at duos, and we work on duos because we believe that's what teams are, a collection of duos, right? And the reason why we go after the duo is because it's the smallest atomic unit of trust. When you work with just an individual or you work with an entire team, they have the ability to blame and they have the ability to hide. But when you have to work with each individual, you have no place to hide, right? There's no place to hide. There's no one to blame. You have to work it. And the reason why you want high trust is because when you have high trust, it means you're bringing your best self to work, right? Those teams, they're coming and they're bringing their best selves. So it's critically important that teams look at those relationships. I wish I had known this back then, 20 years ago, because it was the broken relationships that really got in our way. You look and you figure out which one of those are strong, which one of those are really strong, which one of those are weak, and which of those are broken. And then it's our job to really repair those, to really build that trust between those. And last but not least, belief. Right? I probably only don't even really have to talk about this because we talked about it all day yesterday, and we will continue to talk about it all day today. You cannot transform, you cannot drive a movement, you cannot change if you don't have belief, right? Belief is at the core, right? So great teams have a shared belief, right? But what they do, the nuance that they do is they build belief in other people, constituent building. Because if only you believe, nothing will happen. You have to build belief in others. Once you build belief in others, then you can transform, then you can change, then you can drive movements. So great teams do not come about by chance. Right. They take a tremendous amount of hard work. Right. And they have to be a fusion of the personal and the rational. But it's not just them that have to do the hard work, it's us also that have to do the hard work. We can no longer ignore the middle. We have to pay attention to the core. We have to help them, we have to teach them, we have to coach them, we have to mentor them. We have to help them be great. Great teams are what drives transformation, what drives change. It's imperative that we all do it. Thank you.